Ani, Bujo, Tanzi, Sega, welcome everyone. My name is Nochmoen Mushkogiyashk, better known as Philip Kote III. I belong to the Underwater Panther Clan and I'm also a band member of Moose Deer Point First Nations. Today I'm here to share with you a traditional land acknowledgement. Artworks TO, Toronto's Year of Public Art 2021, and the City of Toronto would like to acknowledge our presence on the land that has been the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee peoples since time immemorial. And in 1805, with the signing of the Toronto Purchase, is now the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit. As we reach back to those first Torontonians, we remember our Mother Earth through the Seven Grandfather teachings, wisdom, bravery, respect, honesty, truth, humility, and love. The stories of each of these nations endure and continue to guide our thoughts and actions on this land. And as we acknowledge our Mother Earth, we acknowledge the Medicine Wheel and its teachings, we recognize the four directions, north, south, east, and west, and the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. It is these four seasons that represent the circle of life. Nindanawe which means all my relations, which means we are all related. Aho, miigwech matakwiasin. Hi everyone, my name is Anastasia De Leon. I am the East Hub Exhibition Manager and excited to be here today. I just wanted to come on quickly and tell you a little bit about Artworks TO in case you're not familiar. It is the uh, Toronto's Year of Public Art 2021-2022. We started this year September and we're going all the way till next year fall. Uh, so it's really a celebration of Toronto's exceptional public art exhibition and the creative community behind it. So it's an opportunity to shine light on the next generation of curators and artists. And we have some of those artists and curators here today. So really excited for you to be here and hear about the, all the amazing things that they have done and that they're currently doing. And if you want to know more about Artworks, I would suggest going on www.artworksto.ca and just seeing all the amazing events, programming and things that we have planned for the year. And I think that's it for me, just wanted to be short and sweet. Um, so I'll pass it off to Priya and uh, enjoy. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Scarborough Rising. Uh, this talk series tonight, the 90 minutes is gonna be all about Scarborough and art, two of my very favorite things to talk about. And I'm joined by three artists whose work I have enjoyed for many, many years uh, in my time as a journalist, as an editor of Urbanology Magazine, and just as an arts enthusiast in the city. Um, so I'm going to start by doing a very quick introduction of each of them and then letting them tell you much more about their amazing work and what they do and their relationship to Scarborough. So first we have Duane Morgan. Duane Morgan is two-time Canadian National Poetry Slam champion. He began his career as a spoken word artist in 1993 and in 1994 he founded Up From The Roots entertainment to promote the positive artistic contributions of African Canadians and urban influenced artists. He's published 14 books, which is quite a feat because I'm still hoping to publish one in my time. Um, and as a member of the Spoken Soul Collective, Collective Morgan is a 2021 curator for Artworks TO responsible for the public art that's going to be on display in Scarborough Town Center. And I'm sure we'll talk more about that later on this evening. 
Next, we have Ashley McKenzie Barnes, an award-winning curator and creative director with over 17 years of integrated experience in design, cultural programming, teaching, and visual art. She has worked in the media broadcasting, entertainment, publishing, corporate, and nonprofit sectors. Most recently, she led the launch of the International Campaign for Universal Music Canada's newest soul sensation, Emmanuel's single Black woman, which she was also profiled in. And in 2020, she was the curator for Canada's longest running Black History Festival, Kumba, at Harbourfront Centre, and one of the main 2019 curators for Nui Blanche Toronto in 2019, an exhibit that I really, really, really enjoyed. I love it. And finally, we have Randall Adjay. He is an author, inspirational speaker, arts educator, community leader, and most recently named Ontario's Poet Laureate. Um, he uses spoken word to empower and transform through edutainment and is the founder of one of Toronto's largest and longest running youth-led initiatives, Reaching Intelligent Souls Everywhere or otherwise known as Rise. Um, so amazing, amazing artists that we that I feel very privileged to be joined with tonight. Um, so I'm gonna open up the floor for you all to tell us a little bit more about what you do in your own words and especially about your relationship with Scarborough. Um, maybe we can start with Dwayne in the order that I introduced you. All right, for sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Priya, and it's great to be joined with uh, Ashley and, and Randell uh, on here as well. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Priya, in the uh, intro, I started Spoken Word back in 1993, and at that time, there was absolutely nothing really artistic happening in Scarborough, especially as it pertained to, you know, racialized people, and, you know, there were so many of us that really didn't have a, a platform or a place um, so many young people who were the first generation of their family, you know, outside of wherever their, their family came from, who are just kind of born here and trying to navigate, you know, to holding on to culture, but still, you know, being Canadian. Um, so that, you know, by 1994, I was like, you know what, I need to do something to create some opportunities for people. And that's when I started up from the roots and started putting on, you know, talent shows and, and different things in the community just to get people out and performing. And for a lot of young people, it was just, you know, having something positive that they could focus on and do just kept them out of trouble. So, you know, so many young people who, um, you know, who had talent and no outlet, um, the shows that I was producing became that outlet that they were able to use to just, you know, keep themselves on, on a path that was away from a lot of the negative influences that were around us at the time. And, you know, I've just been consistently doing that for the last 28 years. Well, maybe Ashley will turn it over to you then. For sure. Um, my name is Ashley McKenzie Barnes, pronouns she, her. Uh, long standing relationship with Scarborough and still have one. Um, uh, even though I am no longer residing in Scarborough, a lot of my work takes me back there quite a bit. As you mentioned already, Priya um, was one of the 2019. Uh, or the 2019 curator for Scarborough New East Blanche. Um, I've done quite a bit of teaching also in Scarborough in different outreach programs and across uh, um, the UFT campus. Uh, myself, I grew up as an artist, uh, didn't stay uh, as just an artist over the last two decades. Um, kind of took me into the world of curating. I originally started out in design and advertising from my art career, uh, which has kind of led me now to where I am, where I have my own agency called DOPE, which, st which stands for Diverse Progressive Experiences and has a nonprofit link to it called uh, DOPE Show Art Foundation. Uh, a massive hybrid, I think, of the two worlds from curatorial and experiential crossing over into commercial and um, uh, and campaigning work in, in the creative and design and marketing worlds. 
I, I think to, if I was to look back where it all started, it was within my years in Scarborough. I mean, I went to Cedar Ridge Art Camp, which is in Scarborough. I discovered Sway Magazine, which I later became the art director of for, for six years uh, while I was in Scarborough. Um, I've done a lot of my outreach in Scarborough and then eventually came downtown, worked with places like Manifesto Festival, the Remix Project, Artscape moved into doing work with the city of toronto while working in agencies on the corporate level um and eventually i've just kind of made my way up to being like an independent curator uh and creative director and agency owner so i'm sure there's so much more to that story i'm leaving out and you get you kind of get you, you get lost talking about yourself after doing these talks for a while so hopefully there's if there's unanswered questions there's more to discover but that's kind of me in a nutshell Randella J, um, you know, born and uh, raised, I guess, for most of my life here in Scarborough. I love Scarborough, and it's a good reason why I started doing the work that I did. I think about individuals like Dwayne, Priya, all three of you, actually, who really have started following your own passion, living your own purpose, and gave me a sense of what can I do for my generation. So I'm really thankful, like, all of us are of, di of different generations. Uh, for myself, I, I founded RISE, which stands for Reaching Intelligent Souls Everywhere. And the premise behind it was about creating safe and inclusive spaces for artists to express themselves in a positive way. I'm a poet, spoken word artist, and I just love this place. I love this place because it's uh, the underdog of the city. And often I like that feeling because you get to prove something when somebody doesn't see you as equal value. When you do something big, it, it stands out that much more. So I love, I love growing up here because it taught me to work hard for what I believe in. Nice, nice. Okay, so I have something that I want to put out there to all of you. Two words, Scarborough, artists, what comes to mind? Like, beyond just yourself, just like what comes to mind when you see those two words? Uh, I mean, for me, I think it's um, creativity because I, I guess my experience is that, you know, so much of the, the artists in who come out of Scarborough, you know, there's so little resources that you just kind of have to be creative in how you do whatever it is that you do, how you find an audience, how you find, you know, outlets to do your stuff. So I think, um, you know, Scarborough just creates a lot of truly creative people who don't just know the art, but also know other elements of the art, how to promote the art, how to do things, because we're forced to wear so many different hats all the time. I would say innovative and powerful. I'm trying to look for the right word to say this, because I feel like, I don't know if, if Randell and Dwayne have this, but I, I constantly run into amazing Scarborough people. And I think like there's a community and like a family, like a union about it when you meet them, but it's also like, it's kind of unknown. So I don't know how to categorize that in a word, but what comes to me when I think even like, like at the Artworks launch yesterday, uh, Count, Council Crawford, who like manages the budget for all of the city was like, and I'm from, he came off the stage and he was like, and I'm from Scarborough too. And I'm like, what? Like, it's just like, we're so spread out. We're so massive. We're so, uh, like we're constantly connected but the word i'm looking for it's just it's just the way in that we we flourish all through the gta i think is like very unique and special so i don't have a word for that but i have a whole like explanation for how i feel i mean i, I think what what ashley's saying is, is pretty interesting because i think you know there's such a a negative stereotype that a lot of people have about scarborough that there's almost you know people who don't mention that they're from Scarborough until they're in a safe space where it's like, oh, you're from Scarborough. Yo, I'm from Scarborough. And then they let out their Scarborough-ness, you know what I mean? But it's like, we just bring, wear the Scarborough like a badge of honor under our, our uniforms or whatever until it's like, yo, we can bring that out and, and, and put it out into the world. So I think, you know, people kind of have that you know, do I, do I say I'm from Scarborough in this environment? Cause some people aren't going to get it. And then once they know that, yo, it's safe to say you're from Scarborough, there's a pride that also goes with it as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and since you brought up that sort of stigma or the negative um, connotation that's attached to Scarborough sometimes, depending on what setting you're in, how has that, if at all, impacted each of you in terms of the art and, and your work in art? Yeah, I mean, I can take, oh, no, I see Dwayne go, 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 go for it, go for it, go, go Ashley. I mean, that one's a really soft spot for me because that one's really a soft spot for me because I'm really big on like representing Scarborough and Scarborough was really cool for me when I was growing up, even though I went to school in high school in North York. Um, but there was just something that was like really prized about being that Scarborough girl. Um, and I growing up with that pride, especially when I was doing projects, especially Nui Blanche is a perfect example, like seeking out artists that were like Doro the third and doing like, you know, a 60 foot by 60 foot tag on the on the outside of a government building that had every street name in Scarborough and especially at a time when Scarborough was really being categorized with a lot of violence that was an odd year for a lot of violence just happening especially with young black males it was just non-stop I, I remember it very clearly um, and Scarborough was a good percentage of that so it was really important to uh, celebrate our neighborhood and celebrate our, our space in a way that felt really proud when the Scarborough natives were coming out to it and seeing those street names written um, at that scale, scale. And also the fact that it stayed up for a few months afterwards after a 12 hour durational event because the city and the employees of the Civic Center were so proud of it and the mall was so proud of it. And then for it to go up for almost two years after when the mall, the mall then inherited it and Scarborough Town took it. Um, so when I say, things like this or when I, um, or like even the artists that were there, Hay Copy, um, Kent Monkman, uh, Ebony G. Patterson, whose work went on to be acquired um, by the AGO into their Caribbean collection that's up now. This was really important to set the tone that Scarborough had a lot of pride. So people like Hay Copy and Mark Krupp stood art and, you know, Duro the Third were doing these massive installations, these projects that were actually reflecting back the community, highlighting people like Lily Singh and Jamal McGlore and Cardinal Official and uh, Mia Washington. Like this was really important work. Um, to do at the time, especially because of the negative connotation that was happening and to remind us of just how amazing we are, how much people, how many soccer players, television anchors, news hosts, artists, authors, um, poets had coming out uh, had come out of Scarborough. And I think we forget that a lot when we get our minds get filled with that social conditioning about what Scarborough is. I mean, and then also too, was to bring high art to Scarborough. And in it like during a time like a contemporary art fair when everything is spectacle downtown. So having Kent Monkman and having Ebony G. Patterson and international artists and having certain artists there that have a certain stature in um, in the contemporary art world was really important too, because we also are a place where we uh, breed talent on many levels, international levels. And it's something that we also forget and also give a dishonor to when we're not celebrating that energy there. Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, it's pretty dope, everything that Ashley was uh, just talking about. I think for, in my experience, um, a lot of the young people that I was working with at the time, you know, for a lot of them, their families didn't go out to art things, weren't, you know, art wasn't really a part of what they did back home or whatever. So they didn't really get what we were doing as young people with this art stuff. So, you know, for me, I was just trying to um, show people another way, another path, another thing, you know, that we can do and try to bring this positive light, you know, to Scarborough. And I can remember this show that I did. There's a place in Scarborough uh, called Twilight today. Uh, back in the day, it was called Something Different. And I used to do some of my shows there. And I did a show once and it was sold out. And I don't know why all these people still wanted to come. And these people came and they rushed the place. They broke down the door. We had to like lock off the show in the middle of the thing and i mean you know live band singers are going on and you know everybody rushed the thing and i had to be like yo this is the same kind of thing we're running away from but so you know a lot of it was like you know trying to have that edu that that art education piece be like yo this is we can't just ruin good things that we have like we got to build some things for ourselves because nobody's trying to build it for us and you know really work with the artists and be like yo 
we can do this stuff and use it to get out of our situations, but we have to approach it totally different. And, you know, that was really what I wanted to, to bring to the work that I was doing and, and with the, with the artists that I was working with at the time. I can really add too, too much, uh, but, but love all of what Ashley and Dwayne said. I think the one thing uh, that comes to mind now actually is that it's always, there's this sense of, uh, I use the word innovative at first because when you're not given much, similar to what Dwayne was saying, we're not given much, you figure a way to, to find a way, you know? And so I think it, it, when you don't have a space to work in, when you don't have an opportunity to collaborate with other people, when you have to work at a Starbucks or a certain space and you have to travel downtown for certain events, it really builds a sense of resilience and a sense of creativity, as Dwayne mentioned, because you have to find, you have to figure it out. Uh, and I think that's what I love about Scarborough artists because it, it, it bleeds in their music, their poetry, the ways in which they navigate. Uh, but I, I love this place. You know, I think more than anything, a lot of the art uh, that I've seen, and even even now, like we have Stefan James and uh, uh, and Shamir Anderson, we have Lily Singh, like these people doing incredible things, but everyone just kind of pigeonholes them and says Toronto. And so when we did Nui Blanche in 2019, it was beautiful to be able to see all these different individuals, legends, in fact, legends who've done so much for Scarborough, because I think it's important that the, the city recognize that a lot of the culture you have, a lot of the arts that's being created comes from Scarborough legends and Scarborough pioneers like the Wayne as well, as well too. So uh, yeah, shout out to Nui Blanche and what you did actually is a beautiful thing to this day, like just beautiful thing. So all of you have your own art and then all of you have also curated art and, and or created space for other artists. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, I know that there's a lot of young people in Scarborough and just people in general in Scarborough who are trying to do art and doing art or trying to make it doing art. What is it that you are looking for when you set out to curate space for artists and or when you're putting together a show for example um, and choosing the artists that you're working with what do you look for in the artists that you're working with i can take that if you if no one's going to do it um uh is this in scarborough art artists specifically or just in general Priya? yeah let's do scarborough artists since we're all focused on scarborough and art today that's smart. Um, I, there's a few things. Uh, I mean, obviously that sense of pride is really big. Um, it was something that I was looking for even in Nui Blanche and in other projects that I've done in Scarborough, just because again, um, without tainting our experience in Scarborough, and we've had so many, I'm not saying everything is positive by any means. There's been a lot of struggle. There's a lot of resilience, like uh, Randall has said, there's a lot of uh, community building and, and that's had to be done and just like rebuilding of certain neighborhoods. But I think when I'm working in Scarborough, I really want to work with artists that are um, showing their current experience from um, like a prideful lens, something that's gonna inspire and uplift the others around them. Um, and if, if it is a story of, you know, trauma or marginalization um, or, or uh, oppression or, or uh, like any, any factors, it's, you know, what's, what's the takeaway? I mean, what is like, like what, what's the story we're trying to, to, to say here? And I think, um, again, in Scarborough too, like, going in and, and animating like the uh, Scarborough Town Center and, and making that a place of community was really, really important and how those artists did it. We had like, you know, Dwayne Morgan's wife was a part of it as a dancer and we had uh, like Tamil leads that were a part of it. Our signs were done in Tamil, which was never done before for Nui Blanche. They had never changed the language of signs. Um, and like that is all coming from a place of pride and wanting to see your, your body, the same body as yours reflected in a space, being proud to be reflected back into a space, having a story that you're proud to share. Um, and then also just like, like heart, strength, resilience, just heart. Um, 
Like we're not, I, I've never met a soft Scarborough person. We have a lot of heart. Uh, we have a lot of intention. Um, you know, we have a lot of inspiration to share. So these are, these are the things um, in my own practice that I put out there. So I look for those things in artists. It's for me, I look for vulnerability. You know, I look for someone who isn't afraid to be vulnerable to tell their story because growing up here, as Scarbo said, you, you have to have heart. And it's not because this is a, a tough place. You know, not all of Scarborough is tough or challenging to live in. That's something I want to just say. Like, there's parts of Scarborough that are more beautiful than many parts in downtown Toronto. Like, if you go down Sylvan at the end of Scarborough Golf Club, you'd be surprised by the mansions you see down there. So not all of Scarborough is like that, but I look for a vulnerability that no matter which part of Scarborough you've grown out of or from, that you're not afraid to be vulnerable and share a bit of your story. And definitely the second thing I'd say is heart. Like it, it's really about heart, like not being afraid to really speak truth to power, you know, because there are some injustices that happen here just because something happens at, let's say, Maine and Danforth, you know, instead of saying Maine and Danforth, they'll say Scarborough just so that Scarborough gets this, this, this sense of it. Um, I know this is kind of veering off from the question, but I think what I'm also looking for is I'm looking for people who really aren't afraid to, like I said, speak truth to power. Um, like I, I went to school, obviously high school here in Scarborough, we had to fight to get a writer's craft class, you know, whereas I met a friend who lived at Northern uh, or went to school at Northern and they had like philosophy and sociology and all these different things and thinking of northern it's on bayview and bayview is where i think a lot of like these these are individuals children who are being nurtured to essentially be bosses but they give us we have to fight for writer's craft in scarborough because they see us as the employees of these bosses and so i look for people who have heart who aren't afraid to speak that truth and say this is where i come from but just because you put me down it doesn't mean that i don't have heart it doesn't mean that my story isn't valid so that's what I look for as well, too, because it's important to be honest about what's what injustices we're experiencing here, too. I think just to, to jump in on that, I think for me, I really look for uh, a hunger, you know, uh, like a real hunger to, to to do what it is that they're doing. I'd ever want um, to put someone in my show who, you know, my event is going to be the end of their journey. I want someone who's this is just going to be a part of what they're doing. They got some bigger plans, but they're going to just come in and do whatever they can do to make a, a mark for themselves and a name for themselves. And, you know, if you do a show and everybody on that show is hungry, I mean, people get so blessed by everything that they experienced at that event because everybody was just pouring everything that they had into the event. And um, I think that's one of the, you know, the greatest things. So I'm always trying to look for, you know, who's hungry, who's willing to like, you know, take a risk, who, who's, you know, jumping off the diving board and hoping that there's water in the pool. You know what I mean? Like who's just going for it. And those are like some of the most attractive uh, artists to work with because, you know, they even inspire me to like think differently about what I'm doing. So I'm always looking for, um, you know, who really just has that, that hunger and just really wants it. To pick up off the point you, you talked about it in terms of the artist making you think differently or prompting you to think about um, your shows in different ways, as you all have gone through your journeys as artists, what are some of the things that you've learned um, from either other artists in Scarborough and or from the specific work that you've done in Scarborough in terms of setting up spaces or whether it was Rise or putting on your shows, Duane, or curating um, Nui Blanche, Ashley, what have you learned from either creating those spaces and or from the artists themselves? On this, um, one of the things that I learned, and I didn't know it at the time, but I learned about like the, the idea of learning to love a problem. And I'll explain because over the years, I've learned this concept. Many of you may know it's called design thinking. And design thinking is a five-step process to problem solving. So you start with empathizing with those who are dealing with and navigating through the problem. And then you learn to define what the problem is. Then you ideate thinking about what solutions, what ideas can help solve the problem. You prototype and then you test. 
And if you test and you might have to start back all over, but the problem here was there just wasn't anything. There wasn't anything out here in Scarborough to really be able to do or go to that was creative. We had to create these spaces. And so the problem that we were given here in Scarborough in terms of the lack of spaces became a great opportunity. So I think what I learned through the art and the artists that I work with and the problem that I had to deal with in creating Rise was learning to love the problem because in learning to love the problem, I was really able to think about what great solutions can come out of it, how you can turn these rocky moments almost into golden opportunities. So I think, I think for me, if, if this problem technically didn't exist, Rise wouldn't exist. And I'm not sure how far my work would have taken me. So what I've learned is to learn to love the problem and, and that there's a seed of opportunity in the problem as well. Um, you know, I think uh, twofold and, and even just kind of keeping it within our, our panelists, I think, you know, what um, Ashley created with Nui Blanche was like magical to me because I'm like, you really have to think outside of the box to see this. Like when I came and I looked, I'm like, yo, like who came, who thought of, you know, all of this stuff because we're just so conditioned to like, yo, it's Scarborough. Like even when they said, oh, Nui Blanche is coming to Scarborough, it's like, okay, it's not going to be like downtown. It's going to be, you know, this, eh, you know, like a smaller kind of version, but it was so well done, so creative. The stuff that was, was presented was so on point. And it's just like giving yourself permission to imagine, right? Because so many times we're just conditioned by this, the, the surroundings that you don't even imagine anymore and you don't even imagine outside of your conditions and then the other thing I, I would say it's going back a few years when Randell was just you know coming on the scene people would always hit me up and be like yo you hear there's this there's this new poet named Randell he's coming for you he's coming to eat your food yo that's your competition I'm like what are you talking about I'm like this guy cannot be my competition like it, it's just it, it just doesn't work that way my my responsibility, if he's coming, is to make his journey easier. I can't compete with him. I have to make sure that his path doesn't have the same issues that my path did. And through building that kind of relationship with Randell, it also has given me access to uh, a younger demographic, uh, a younger way of thinking. You know, because how the young people are, are dealing with, you know, art and that kind of stuff, it's very easy, you know, 30 years in the game to just kind of think of it in one kind of way. But when you surround yourself with younger people, you get fresh ideas, new perspectives. So if I thought, you know, Randell was my competition, I would have robbed myself of that learning. So I think it's also about every generation not being okay reinventing the wheel, but at some point putting an engine on the wheels and a steering wheel and start going somewhere collectively with this generational knowledge that we've um, accumulated. That was really, really good. You know what? It's so funny because Dwayne took the words right out of my mouth. Um, and my biggest thing, and I always kind of stand by it, and I've, I've spoken about it in multiple interviews, was that um, I was really challenged with uh, trying to, to create something like push past the boundaries of what were in front of me or the red tape that was in front of me with Scarborough because of that idea that it's community, it's Scarborough, it's not downtown. Um, and there was a lot of back and forth when I was working with the city at the time and in a great way, like we all ended up coming on the same page, but, uh, but pushing for more, expanding the mindset of when you're working in Scarborough and what that means, expanding the mindset of what community means. Community doesn't mean low budget. Community doesn't mean like hire your friends. Community does mean like uplifting a community and representing a community on the in the best way you can and on the largest scale that you can. And I came in there with like big thoughts and big ambitions. And I do that with every, like even with Harborfront, um, when I did Kumba, it was the same thing and it was the same outcome because Black History Month doesn't mean just like keeping it in the small bucket. So I think um, to answer that question sp specifically, I learned um, to really stand up and, and, and think larger and be, and like be comfortable and be brave and be bold and be very, very assertive and loud about how big 
and how big you want your ideas to go, especially when you're representing something that's so close to your heart um, and not accepting, like there was sometimes we'd be in a conversation and be like, hey, downtown committee, if this was put in front of your committee and your zone, would you vote it in? And when the answer was no, it was then why was it being voted into Scarborough? So not like you yourself have to be in the mind frame, but you are looking at what your projects, this zone, Scarborough, Scarborough, what it means to you, the same way you're looking at being downtown centric, the experiences you have downtown, the artistry you see downtown, the level of, of um, uh, production that you see downtown, all of that needs to to, to stay in consideration regardless of where you're working but especially if you're coming back into a into your old stomping grounds and and saying hey like this is this is going to be elevated this is going to be the same there's going to be people who hop on the rt and the train station who want to come down and see this the same way they would walking up to nathan phillips square so tonight we're the talk was called Scarborough Rising. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the next generation. And I think when Randell invited me to moderate this panel, he mentioned that, you know, the three artists, the three of you are all from different generations. You're representing, a, you know, various generations of Scarborough art, um, but there's new generations that are coming up now. Um, so I, I think I'm gonna start this question off with Dwayne. Um, and say, how have you seen Scarborough artists evolve and change, grow over the years? And then we can go through the different generations on the panel. Um, I mean, it's such an interesting thing because it's like, you know, I look back that even, even today, there's still so few spaces for, for artists to really create um, but then, you know, we see like what Cardinal has been able to, to build, you know, we've referenced Lily Singh, um, you know, the bare naked ladies, like the weekend, there's so many people who have roots in Scarborough, no outlet and somehow have become, you know, these world recognized artists. So, you know, I think it's for those coming up it's such a great thing to know that all these people came from where you're at. And even without all of the stuff that we're speaking about, somehow found a way. The talent was so rich. The adversity was so rich that they just found a way to hone in on what it was that they were doing. And I think, you know, if more of the young artists can realize that, that, you know, as much as I have been speaking and advocating for creative spaces, that even without them, we can still do it because there's just a resilience that, that is born into people from Scarborough that allows us to overcome some of these arbitrary barriers. It allows us to overcome the fact that we're often, you know, overlooked by levels of government. Um, you know, we're overlooked as a place where arts and culture happens. I think because so many of the people in Scarborough are, you know, immigrants who don't always know how to advocate for themselves, you know, within the political system that we just get the leftovers of, you know, whatever's there. But I think, you know, getting the leftovers um, generates a hunger for steak a hunger for a big hearty meal. You don't want to always have the leftovers. You don't always want to be that person who was cast aside. And I think that's that hunger that, that really propels people forward. Um, so I think for a lot of the younger artists, you know, if they can really tap into those stories of those people who are doing it and have done it, it really, you know, allows them to to imagine, you know, kind of what we're what Ashley and I were just talking about, um, just what the possibilities actually are. I jump in here, and you know, I love what Dwayne mentioned earlier uh, because, of course, like there's there had to be someone who paved the way, and in paving that way it gives an opportunity for someone else to walk down a certain path. And definitely Dwayne's reached back a number, many times and still to this day, reach back just to say, hey, you don't have to trip on this twig that I fell on, or you don't have to fall down this hill. 
And I think it's just really important that Scarborough artists recognize to look around, you know, because to be honest, I didn't know a lot of people were from Scarborough until I think Nui Blanche taught me a lot. I'm not going to lie, taught me a lot about who was from my own neighborhood that I didn't actually know. And I know we keep referencing Nui Blanche because it's literally the biggest art thing that Scarborough's ever had in my, well, as far as I know, you know, and I think it's important to, to do that and, and look at who else is out there and reach out. You can't be afraid to reach out because I think it was probably what February of 20, 2012, I reached out to Dwayne and we're still here almost 10 years later, still connected in some capacity. And I think you can't be afraid because when you grow up in Scarborough, there's a sense of camaraderie that folks do want to see you. Like, I think there, there's a really negative stigma because I can reach out to a lot of Scarborough mentors or elders and they'll help out. They've always kind of been like that as long as I've known. So I think one, to look around and see who's here, who's done it before, but also to put yourself in a position. And one thing I wish I did more is how do we get the political figures, our counselors, our MPPs to advo like advocate more? Because I think we just got the Clark Center and that's new. Uh, just got the Clark Center. That was years of work. And I know Dwayne was advocating for that for a long time as well. But we have Scarborough Theater and I've never had an opportunity to book space in there. So I think you really have to just create your own, you know, whatever it looks like, you got to create your own. I'd love to see a, a co-working space here in Scarborough because I think that would further that entrepreneurial journey in terms of having a space where we can collaborate. So just to kind of reiterate, I think look around and see what other mentors are there. Create your own path or take the path that was created further and then also create the spaces that you want to have because no one's going to come in and give it to us unless we fight for it. I think because Randell took me down a different route with that thought process. Now I forgot what the original question was. I was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the original question, I think, was about through your time of being an artist and working with artists in Scarborough, how have you seen new generations of artists evolve and grow and change? Yeah, I see that they're becoming a lot more comfortable with their practice, especially coming out of Scarborough, because there's a lot of ownership of coming from Scarborough. And like Randell said, and I think before Nuit Blanche for me, like meeting so many, like it's like we know the weekends from there. We know Scarborough's bigged it up. We know Doc McKinney, producer, like all of these people have been coming from there and all these people have been accessing things about Scarborough that make it really cool and trendy. Um, but I think over the like last like three to five years, we've actually seen our ourselves like create some type of imprint and own some space and like actually get really really loud about the people who are coming out of there and and artists going back like this like every like I guess because I'm in the art world there's so many like there's Rajini Pereira like it's like there's Tessa Arlo there's like all these big names that you're seeing in gallery systems and you're like that's that person's from Scarborough and I think it's created like a sense of of comfort and confidence in people's practice and something that I'm seeing now in a lot of bios that get passed by me they're not saying Toronto Ontario they're saying Scarborough and then also making them feel very comfortable about going into like downtown centric spaces like looking for avenues and workshops and classes or mentorship that's like just outside of the Scarborough core because I always said when it's a hub and you stay within the hub only and you don't think you can come out of the hub it is uh it holds you back it can hold you back. It's nice to celebrate the culture in your neighborhood, but at some point you also need to, to step out and see the wider view of what's happening in the GTA and what other practices are and what other curators are doing. And I think there's like a real sense of confidence in creatives and producers and cultural producers to like step out of that bubble and expand more and you've seen it like Dwayne's I've been to like I don't know maybe a hundred I'm just joking not a hundred but like a, a ton of Dwayne shows like in the downtown area I've seen, been to a ton of things that Rise have has put together outside of the Scarborough Corps and I think that mentality that we started here and we come back here and we celebrate here and we bring programming here but we also know we have to expand out of here for the success of what we're doing and the success of the artists that we're representing has become louder and louder over the years wonderful so we have a question from the audience and i forgot actually at the beginning to encourage people to send questions via the comment and the chat feature 
um, and then they will be forwarded to me and I can share them with the panel. I think I can just share them as we go so that we can have a natural free flowing conversation. So the question right now is if money wasn't an object to be considered, what would you place in Scarborough in order to bolster, maintain and continue to animate and sustain the arts and culture community in Scarborough? And I know Randell, you touched on a co-working space. So I guess that you can maybe build on that point, but what else would you, um, all put into Scarborough. I could add a little bit more to the co-working space because I, I don't think it's just a space to to work, but I think it's also a space to create. I think it's also a space to celebrate, um, and it's a it's a multilateral space or multi usage space that we all need. You know, I I can only tell you the amount of times I was sitting in Starbucks for like eight hours just grinding, working. You know what I mean? If I had a space where a friend and I, a friend and I could sit down and build on ideas, I think it would have take, taken me a little bit further as I was kind of building, building myself up, but it has to be something that's multilateral. In the same breath, as much as I'm not such a techie person, I'm realizing how important it is to incorporate tech in the art that we create, that tech is going to be a wave of the future and no matter what we do, we can't run away from it. So I would also encourage that too. So. You know, one of the ideas I have is like using VR, like I'm really in love and fascinated with VR right now and how we can use VR as a way to create, you know, and take art to the next level. So if money wasn't an issue, I create a space that could do all those things and also allow us to engage with tech more to think about art in, in, a, in spheres we've never even conceptualized. Happy to jump in. I love VR too. I'm all into AI right now and AR. I think it's I think it's great. And I think it's something um, this isn't my answer, but I'm going to second Randall's answer because I think bringing tech and innovation into Scarborough um, is like like should be on the forefront of the, like any cultural producers um, mind. Uh, but for me, if I like if it was like unlimited money um i would love to put like some type of historical and like legacy building museum space there but like to act like it's just the idea again we're all saying we didn't know how many people were from scarborough and i think having like this like tourist like tourism based super um educational and insightful like uh, just something that's commemorating all of the talent that's come out of there. Like if you saw Cardinal to Lily Singh to like those soccer players to, you know, every contributor, I think it would be um, such a beautiful historical monumental um, space that would be frequented regularly and also remind and bring art and culture into that, um, into that neighborhood and in, in such an authentic way. Cause we are, we all, like Dwayne said, we're all of us are so like artistic, we're all there, but sometimes we did like, also on the, on the flip side, there's so many communities and families who are, you don't tap into it. So I think there needs to be like something kind of permanent there that's reminding people that there's so much art and soul and artistry and talent that continues to come out of that area. Um, and I guess, yeah, I'd add to those two things that, you know, uh, a state of the art, Performing Arts Center, I think, is something that is necessary that hopefully even has uh, an art gallery, you know, as part of it, um, because I think part of it also is establishing that as part of the culture, you know, going to the art gallery, going and looking at art as something that you can actually go and do um, in Scarborough. And I mentioned before about, you know, how there's so many, you know, immigrants who are in Scarborough and you know for for those people how do we hold on to our culture how do we hold on to where it is that we came from well through art so if you actually have a performing arts center where the tamil community can you know present their work and they can all congregate in scarborough and come and and watch whatever it is that's a celebration of their community and you know the jamaicans can come and the trinidadians can come and the indian people can come and everybody can just rent out this space and consume art without having to always drive downtown or Mississauga or the, the Rose Theater in Brampton or whatever. Like Scarborough is long overdue for a space where we can begin to show people that consuming art 
is something that we do here and is a viable thing that happens in Scarborough. There's a, there's a follow-up question, uh, so I'll just throw it out there. Uh, the question is, why do you think a space has not been created as yet? Um, you know, I, I would say for the same reasons I, I said why it's needed, it's because of who lives in Scarborough. Uh, and who lives in Scarborough aren't the same people who, you know, do letter campaigns to the M, you know, to the members of parliament and all this kinds of stuff. It's for the most part, there's a lot of immigrants who are just trying to make ends meet. They don't necessarily always have time for the advocacy role and stuff like that. But we as, you know, this first generation who've been growing up here, this is part of some of the work that, that you know, we have to lead. Uh, that question, you know, even goes back to, well, why is there no subway in, in Scarborough? Why is the TTC the way it is in Scarborough? It's because of who lives in Scarborough. And if the demographics of Scarborough were different, and if the people who lived in Scarborough looked different, I think we would have a lot more things being uh, happening in Scarborough than there are right now. Randall gives the thumbs up and um, Ashley, uh, you're good. You don't have anything to add to yeah, I, I agree with it, but it's probably like an extension of it. I mean, a lot of things are, are, are privately funded or corporate funded. And I think the, the idea that having an attractive audience there an, or an audience, again, if we go back who historically, like, you know, there are surveys done, there's things, there's stats that we, that we collect that's historically interested in this um, might not have the numbers that make it compelling enough for a funder um, to go there. So I think uh, as, I, I, I can't say for sure, but I think as culture builds in Scarborough and we can and we continue to build culture in Scarborough, those, those stats and those numbers will raise up. But also like it, it, it is a lot to do with enticement for, for money and funding. And I hope, you know, maybe one day like the three of us We'll put our names on a building and and bring it there, being and have the funding to bring there, right? But, but it does have to be something that is is wanted by, um, uh, that's like a, a money, old money, really, or funding. I wasn't gonna say anything initially, but I think there's still that negative stigma, you know. No matter what we've done, no matter if you have a, a, a Scarborough Walk of Fame. Uh, member or you have uh, someone who's curated Nui Blanche from Scarborough, you have a poet laureate from Scarborough. I think Scarborough still has this negative connotation as far as violence. And I think that narrative needs to end because there's a fear, like to this day, there's a fear when I tell people I'm from Scarborough, oh, you're from Scarborough? <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it's like I live on the other end of the world. And it's, it's literally that. And I think there was a mention about us not having a subway. And I think if we had a, a better connection to the rest of the city, which finally is actually starting to happen, I think then maybe we can start seeing some change, but that narrative just needs to end. And the media does a great job propagating it. I think there's something political there in terms of uh, how the economy runs, but I'm not gonna get into all that, but that's my, that's my thoughts. So, um Earlier, Ashley mentioned that, you know, everybody from Scarborough has a lot of heart. And I would have to definitely agree with that. Um, so my next question is, you know, we've talked a lot about your art itself and the curating of, of the art. But as Duane mentioned at the beginning, I think, um, you know, he said we have to wear lots of hats when we do art from Scarborough because you kind of have to do everything. You have to be your own salesperson. You have to, you know, take care of your own promotions, et cetera, et cetera. So in your practice and in your day-to-day um, -day business in terms of just being an artist, like your professional um, self, how have you brought Scarborough with you? Like Ashley mentioned that, you know, you have to get out of your hub. So you go to all these places, right? You know, whether it's going to the provincial legislature when you know when you're sworn in as the poet laureate or going to various art exhibits downtown or um, performing all over the world 
how do you bring Scarborough with you? Uh, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, um, I mean, my experience in Scarborough is so much a part of everything that I do. It informs so much of my approach to, to everything because it was just there from, you know, the beginning and from the, the foundation. And um, so for me, it's, it's just a natural part of, of who I am. I just, I, I just proudly wear this, this badge of, of Scarborough. I mean, the, the other thing to that, though, is that um, in order for, you know, me to, to grow, especially on the international um, stage, I actually in some ways had to leave Scarborough behind because, you know, when I, when I went to uh, Germany for the first time, which was like the first place, you know, outside of North America that I went to perform, it was a horrible performance. It was like the one time I could say certified I bombed on that show. And I was like, yo, this ain't never going to happen again. But I had to be critical and ask myself, well, why did it go this way? And the reason why it went that way is because all the poems that I had were about things rooted in Scarborough. Now, here I am in Germany saying all these poems about Scarborough and everybody's like, who cares? Where is that? I've never heard of this place. What are you doing? And I realized that, you know, when you want to take your work outside of Scarborough, it can be informed by Scarborough, but it can't just all be about Scarborough. So I had to get a very international perspective on the work that I was writing and take what I was learning from Scarborough and infuse that into it to allow me to then go back to Germany and not bomb the second time when I went there um, because I had learned, you know, how to embed the, the Scarborough into what I was doing as opposed to it all being about Scarborough. I feel like a lot of us that come out of Scarborough are, I want to say almost like the rose that grew from concrete in a sense, you know? And so for me, it's, you put me anywhere in the world and I will, I will still find a way to bloom, you know? And um, I wear Scarborough with me everywhere I can. This is a shirt designed by Mr. Mark Stoddard, my men, one of my mentors. And I just, I think I just put, it's in my DNA and I wear it on my back, you know, with, with a lot of pride. And that's how I really represent Scarborough. I'm never afraid to tell anyone where I'm from uh, because it made me who I am today. I don't know. I think it's a good question. Like my answer was so dry because I kind of was just like, I don't know, my attitude. Like, <laughs> I just feel like I had the attitude. It's just like, it's there. It's it's how, like, I've, I've been the same way, I, I think. And like, let me get really clear about that. I work in an industry and in a world that sometimes can be very elitist, like when you're working in the contemporary art space and like you can, you know, there's a sense of you and like what Randall says where you always wear it, but it's not like I'm necessarily wearing a Scarborough hat, though I would, or like a Scarborough made t-shirt, though I would. Um, but it's the fact that you're always just wearing it. And I feel like there's a sense of honesty and, and authenticity that we bring to our work because of it. There's not something to hide, even to the point that Dwayne was like, I was making Scarborough jokes somewhere else, right? Like we just do it so naturally. So when I say in my attitude or how I carry myself or how I come, come to my work or how I come to my ideas, there's just this like sense of authenticity because I'm coming from Scarborough. Um, and it's like, you take it or you leave it, right? Um, and it's just always kind of shown up in my work that way. Nice, nice. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what do you think the city and maybe even the country um, can learn from Scarborough? And I, and I asked that question because off of an in, um, something that made me think about it was a while ago, a fr someone had shared a video on Facebook of Trudeau saying, you know, like his, it was like one of those like diversity videos. Um, and basically he, he was saying on it, you know, his Canada is the Canada where the person of, you know, Filipino descent sits next to the person of Indian descent, sits next to the person of Jamaican descent, et cetera, et cetera. Like he was basically going on and on about how his Canada is the one where like, 
we all sit next to each other and experience Canada together. And then the reason why the person shared it is somebody I went to high school with and they said, that's just growing up in Scarborough. That's just what it is like when you just grow up in Scarborough, like that's Scarborough, right? Um, so then it made me think like, you know, the, the, the city and the country can learn a lot from, from Scarborough and from having people from Scarborough in place in all the different institutions that exist in our country. So what do you think can, um, the city, the province, the country can learn from Scarborough? And, and the people in Scarborough and the artists in Scarborough? Um, I mean, one thing I think is to be curious. You know, I think, you know, kind of growing up, I was just curious about some different people who were around me. And it wasn't just about, you know, these stereotypical ideas because, you know, all of my friends looked so different because, you know, even when I went to high school, my high school, you know, hardly had any black people in it. So your friends were just, you know, different people. And it was just a matter of, you know, who was cool? Who was a good person? Who liked the same songs that, that you liked? Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's so much richness in that when we can let go of these ideas that we have and the stereotypes that we have in, you know, how we're socialized to see and, and, and think about people um, and actually just really be with people and, and get the opportunity to, to know people. And, you know, even when you, you know, walk through, you know, the Scarborough Town Center and something and, and just listen to the, the slang that young people are speaking or whatever, it's like an amalgamation of all of these cultures and stuff creating this unique language that everybody understands. Maybe if you're not from Scarborough, you don't understand it. You're like, what are these guys talking about? But everybody from Scarborough knows these words and can pick up on it. You know, if a new one gets thrown in, you can pick up on it pretty quick, uh, you know, what the context of this word is. So it's, it's this great um, melting pot. The only problem is, you know, somebody in Saskatoon might not have that same experience because there aren't that many diverse people around them. So it's great to say, yeah, you could learn this from Scarborough, but if in your actual environment, those people don't exist, then it's like, how do you apply that lesson? Yeah, I can rip off of what Dwayne was gonna say a bit, cause I, it was kind of where I was thinking too, that there's like a very strong, multi, like the multiculturalism and the, the, the diversity, that's like, I, like we're always aiming for diversity and inclusivity. But when you grew up in Scarborough, that's what you knew. And it's just like, I know there's always this battle that, um, you know, with the West End, but even the West End isn't as multicultural. There's nowhere else, as far as I know, in Canada that is as multicultural and understands diverse community than Scarborough. When you grow up, you're growing up around Asian, Filipino, um, African, Jamaican, West Indies, like where, where? And it's just that we, you know, when you move out of Scarborough and you move downtown centric or you move somewhere else across Canada, it's always this grasp of wanting to understand multiculturalism on a higher scale, or wanting to understand like togetherness of community or inclusivity of other cultures. And it's just not something that you need to learn as much in Scarborough. Like we have it, we grew up, we were instilled with it. I go to other parts of the world, doesn't matter, LA, New York, none of them have it. Um, and I don't think Toronto GTA downtown centric has it either, Scarborough has it. So I think there's something um, to learn about that appreciation of diverse community, um, diverse culture, togetherness, unity, like living together um, uh, and celebrating different cultures uh, while living in yours so strongly because most people are first and second generation immigrants there and like really being rooted in that, right? Great. Um, I think I want you guys to, to now start to think about, um, we talked a little bit about like what spaces you would create or what you would bring the question from the audience if you had unlimited resources financially. Um, but how do you think we can sort of collectively start to think about removing barriers and helping the next generation 
of Scarborough artists along. Dwayne touched on it when he talked about how people, you know, would sort of say like, hey, there's a new poet on the scene that's like coming for your spot in regards to Randell. And he said like his job isn't to compete with Randell, it's to try to make it a little bit easier or like remove something that one of the barriers that maybe he faced. So in that same vein now for the new generations of artists that are coming up, how can we start to think about what barriers need to be removed? For them, I think for me and Priya, I want to say you're you're super humble, and I love your humility because urbanology was a big thing for me coming up. Seeing someone, individuals, an editorial team from Scarborough predominantly, and say word, you know, I think about that, and and it's. It was this idea of changing the narrative. And I think we have to, we can't wait for the news to change the narrative. We have to start public publishing for our own selves. And so in creating Say Word, creating Urbanology and all the work you've done, I think it really comes down to, we gotta be the ones who are telling the narrative. They may not listen at first, but if we continue to be consistent in telling what that narrative is and what the, the real true narrative is, I think then we can change that lens a little bit. So that's the first thing that I'd say. And I guess I'd say the second thing is I'm going to go back a little bit to what I said about space. Like, we just need space. Just give us something we can work with, you know, give us something we can work with. And I, and I say give us, but I think it's going to come down to us advocating and creating for ourselves until Ashley, Dwayne and I, you know, the, the day we're rich enough to just put our names on something or just put something out there. I can't wait to that day. Just saying, you know what I'm saying? But um, I can't wait to that. To that day but we got to create for ourselves essentially we got to create the spaces the stories the narratives the art for ourselves and make sure we brand it um as scarborough so that we can ensure that they understand like oh they're not violent <laughs> and it's weird to, it's weird that coming out of my mouth but that's 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 a scary narrative that some people really think so that's my take um I think, yeah, I agree with everything that Randell just said. And I think, um, you know, a lot of it is, is happening. I think, you know, with, with Nui Blanche, with the work Randell and I are doing with Artworks TO, uh, you know, we're creating these, these spaces to highlight, you know, um, Scarborough artists. And hopefully the artists who are coming up can see these things and, and again, imagine what they might be able to do and, and realize that, yo, people from here, are doing it. So um, I think we're, we're on the right path. Um, you know, I think it, it's, it really requires like some of us to just keep doing what we're doing to keep making sure people know, you know, the names of the people who are doing things, who came before, who allowed certain things to, you know, to be happening um, so that there's nobody grows up or comes up feeling like I'm the only one here. Because I know oftentimes when I was coming up, you just felt like you're the only one. And I think, you know, the more uh, the young artists feel like there's a community that they can tap into that supports what they're trying to do, I think it just kind of makes it easier to break down some of those barriers. I mean, I pretty much like second, there's not too much to add there from Randell and Dwayne, they covered it well. I guess if there is anything that I would say and I, that I've always felt was very helpful are these, you know, these having outreach and initiatives that really specifically take opportunities that are outside of the norm or outside of the bubble. And what I mean by that, like, you know, I, I recently did a panel with advanced um, like music conference. And um, since then they're, they're, they've been like, Hey, for, and it was specifically for black uh, young black creatives and music. They were like, Hey, here's a posting from the Junos. They're hiring a so-and-so. Right. Um, or I've been, uh, you know, I'm on the black curatorial forum with Gaetan and and Julie Crooks and and such the whole really great batch and every like for very continuously they're constantly from Montreal from Ottawa from here are sending out updates about curator postings across North America specifically for the Black Curatorial Forum and there's something there in terms of outreach and accessibility to these opportunities that you wouldn't get unless it was funneling down from these places that had created mandates to create opportunities for those places um, that 
that is really important. So there's that like missing piece, I think, that for some places they're not doing that. They're like, we're here, we're trying to make things accessible, but the, the, the disconnect is, is still there, where it's like, yes, we need to get these opportunities in front of these young folks. How do we do this? Um, that, that would be my, my hope for uh, the Scarborough youth and, and creatives or hubs that are functioning right now. We have a couple of questions from Alex in the audience. Um, there are two different questions, so I'll do them one at a time. The first one is, where do you see Scarborough going? I is not the limit. I think we can, we can go far, so far, you know? Uh, recently, or a few years ago, I'll give you an example. A few years ago, uh, I met, I met um, this woman at this award show, uh, this Scarborough Walk of Fame award show. And I was talking to her, she was one of the hosts. Come to find out she was the, if you, y'all remember Franklin back in the day, she was the voice of the mother of Franklin. And I didn't know, I was like, what? It blew my mind. And I think that's one angle, you know, that's one angle. But of course, I think in, in arts and music is kind of where Scarborough names have kind of been prolific in that sense. But I think Scarborough, where Scarborough is going or can go, I think is really un unlimited because I really give thanks to even the three of you for doing it, starting what you started, because it's creating a template, a framework for so many others to see what's possible. Because if I didn't know Dwayne was doing what he was doing, I wouldn't have known that this was even possible, that there was a lane for this in the first place, you know? So I think we just got to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, because I really think it, it's it, it's unlimited, you know, like what we can do is really unlimited. So I'll, I'll start there. But I, um, I'm sorry, this last thought came to my mind. I think we have a template of what the world can look like. You know, globalization has been a term that's been used for the last 20 plus years. But I think Scarborough is a template of what the world can, what the world in one city is. I really do believe Scarborough is the world in one city. And I think the world can learn about from immigration and, and what migration can look like. I think this is a template to, to show the world what it could look like. Um, I think just to, to piggyback on that, um, yeah, I think this is like Scarborough's emerging now. It just kind of feels like, you know, there's there's some momentum that's that's happening. Um, you know, people are starting to to look at Scarborough and, and talk about Scarborough and fund things in Scarborough a bit differently. So I think um, you know, we're just at the very infant stages of where Scarborough is going. I think it's it's a very exciting time. And the, the artists who are on the come up are, are probably going to reap uh, a lot of great benefits from the work that's being done right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to echo that. I think Scarborough is like, I think Scarborough can be on a global scale, but I, I do think the way we do that is like, you know, if, if, we, des if we decide to own it that way. So, um, there's so many people like we already know there's so many people from Scarborough who are so global right like hello the weekend right like Fifi Dobson she's doing a call come back like like there's so many um names so I think it's like really up to us and on our on our own like the way we decide to leverage it the way we decide to program again like I came with that heart to Nui Blanche and wanted it to look and feel a certain way and like that's that that was my intention. So I think as all of us as culture producers, like Randell and Dwayne are already doing it, I think we just continue to like really own the spaces we're in and continue to be very vocal about our history, our context, where we're coming from, our backgrounds and, and why it's significant to the work that we do. The second question from Alex is what is Scarborough identity or what would you like the identity of Scarborough to be? I mean, I, I think Randell summed it up. I mean, it's the, it's the world in one city. That's, that's, that's it. It's everybody is here. And, you know, for the most part, we all get along. We all work with each other, create with each other, go to school with each other. So it's really just this concept of the, the entire world just right here in this one spot.
lots of lots of thumbs up so the, the world in one city at Scarborough um what's the legacy that you want to leave like you you know what what's the legacy that you want to leave for Scarborough and for the the next generations and the people coming up after you I mean I think for me that's that's an interesting thing because, um, you know, so I'm on the Scarborough Walk of Fame. So that's like a, a legacy thing that outlives me. That'll still be there when I'm no longer here. But, you know, I don't even think of what is my legacy in terms of, you know, what I want people to say about me and stuff. For me, Randell is part of my legacy. You know, the, the work that Randell is doing, the stuff that Rise is doing is very similar stuff to stuff that I did 20 years ago. So the fact that that is happening to me, that's part of the legacy. The fact that um, Randell knows that I exist and that I existed and knows of the work that I did is part of the legacy because you never want to have a generation come up that has no connection to who came before them. That just means there's a disconnect, you know, somewhere. So it was very important to me, you know, to, to work with, to nurture, to, to build a relationship with Randell because everything that he does is part of my legacy and every everyone who feels empowered to do things because of what Randell has done is further part of that legacy. And it's just like a family tree that just keeps going. Right. So we all, we all kind of have a role to, to play in that. So as long as there's someone coming after you who knows that you exist because you're reaching back for them, that's the legacy. I was actually going to say something very similar and ultimately it comes down to ensuring, even, again, even if people don't remember Dwayne's name, what he was able to create and the opportunities and just the vision that I was able to get from what he was able, what he's done. I wanna make sure that I could do the same for the, for the next Randell, the next Dwayne, the next actually, the next Priya, because I think it doesn't necessarily matter that Dwayne and I are poetry, we're artists, we're curators, we're creators. And for others to say, let's continue to put a spotlight on this beautiful place that we live in. But if I can add to that, I sound like a redundant, I sound redundant right now, but I want, I, I want to leave this earth knowing that my name or my, my hands were a part of building a space. <laughs> Cause if I was to count the amount of kilometers that I have traveled to downtown to put on events, to do work, man i, I <laughs> there's a lot of kilometers that would rack up so to know that we don't have to leave this place to tell the world or to tell the city about this place is something that i'd love as far as my legacy goes to to know that there's a stamp you know of of, of excellence and and i love what ashley mentioned in terms of like a historical museum because i think you could fill a whole building you know, I think you could fill Scarborough Town Center with all the work of individuals that have come out of Scarborough. Like, like we're not, we're talking, like, I mean, Drake claims this place too, you know, he's the biggest, biggest artist to ever come out of the, in my opinion, you know what I mean? Like, anyways, but I think um, that's what I would say. You know, I, I want to, I want to keep, I want to keep that momentum going for the next generations to come. I absolutely second and third, like both of those comments. I would feel the same. I think you gotta get Randall a building with his name on it. Um, uh, I, my, I think for me, my legacy is gonna feel a little bit different, probably uh, one, because I'm a woman, um, two, because I'm queer. Um, uh, like also because of the type of work I do and like also having an agency too. Now it's like, it's really loaded for me because, um, you know, be coming downtown, like, like coming somewhere where like a lot of like agencies are a thing. There's a lot more black creatives, but not that many that you're running into in the corporate world, but more than you'd probably see from Scarborough, a much bigger LGBTQ community than in Scarborough that is, well, at least an open one. I think these are very important factors and as part of my legacy, because I definitely would never have looked back um, it, when I was living in Scarborough and growing up in Scarborough and thought that a me existed um, for those three factors, being a woman, being queer, uh, being a Black creative agency owner, being a Black curator. Um, so like that is part of my legacy is, is, is also showing you the diversity, especially for young Black women that come out 
of this uh, out of that out of that neighborhood and and like showing young black women and like really all all youth that like it's it's diverse right like it's not it's not we're not a single voice we're all very different on here but um in our practices have taken us to different places but my legacy also needs to be like resistance it needs to show diversity it needs to show um acceptance it needs to show uh pride around the lgbt community around like the around black females in the creative industry there's like hardly any um around like entrepreneurs and such especially for black women so that is like a very very strong part of my my legacy that i would hold dear Awesome. Um, so we're grinding to the end of this conversation. Um, just going to encourage anybody who's in the audience to send your questions. The last 15 minutes was for audience questions, but we kind of took them throughout the talk. So as I wait to see if there are any more from the audience, um, I will continue to ask some more questions based on some of the things that we've talked about the last 80 minutes or so one thing that um was brought up was the idea of of support um and you know like i know even in the time period when urbanology was getting um started there was always that kind of image of toronto of like the the screw face capital the crabs in the bucket mentality and and whatnot so i wanted to um, and it especially would come up in conversations around artists and creatives. So I wanted to get your take on where you think we're at now, right? It's been quite a while since that that sort of time period, but where where are we now in terms of the artists and the creatives um, and that sort of screw face capital slash crabs in a bucket mentality? Um, I mean, I think in some circles that might still exist. And I think, you know, it's like when people are fighting for the limited resources that are there, you know, it kind of pits people against each other. But I, I always try to operate in a completely different way. And, you know, it's like I'm constantly meeting people who are just like, yo, you did this thing for me. I don't even remember some of the stuff that they're telling me about that I did or conversations that or, that or things I connected them to, but they're like, yo, it changed my life when you did this. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank you for telling me. I don't remember it, but you know, I'm grateful because like, I understand like where that comes from because it's like, you know, the, the resources are limited and everybody's trying to get at it. But I've, I've found so much more strength in, in collaborating with people in, sharing opportunities, you know, with people. And I think, um, you know, even with the work that that is um, going on with Randell and Rise, I see them giving opportunities to a lot of people. Um, I got to give a big shout out to, to Ashley because I got to do one of the dopest and most special performances uh, of my life. Um, you know, last year with uh, with Kumba, where I got to, you know, fully work with my daughter and do a performance her and I, you know, together one night, you know, and, and, you know, to work with her and to rehearse with her and kind of show her, you know, show business, you know, or what dad does and, and stuff like that. But, you know, even like, you know, when we don't see each other all the time, we still know that each other, that we're there and we'll check for each other when there's an opportunity, you know, for something to come up. And I think, you know, that's such an important thing, you know, to just check for each other. Right. And, and to, to there's just so much more that you can achieve when you're when you give as opposed to when you're trying to hoard everything. I don't remember the question. It was about the crabs in the bucket, screw face mentality, screw face capital mentality, and if whether you or not you see that still existing. I mean, because like I travel a lot, I definitely would consider us still like a screw face capital. Everyone's like we have we have parts of that for sure, but it's part of our charm. It's part of our charm. Like we have a we have a large West Indian base, especially in Scarborough. It's just part of how we roll. But um I agree with with Dwayne that I feel that the opportunity sharing and um the the expansiveness of 
of resources and and money and funding that has come out and and we continue to share like for instance randall hit me up about this panel right i i i went to Dwayne to ask him to be in like we are constantly in that flow of being like almost like a black mecca but you could call maybe call it the scarborough mecca where we just want to share and it's like we know we know each other from around the way uh one thing i will say that does need to change and i've said this in a few scarborough panels is that there's so much other Scarborough people too um, that that we're not plugging into in terms of creative and outside of different races and, and just different um, uh, uh, like industries and genres that we're, I don't feel that we tap into enough because we constantly say we're shocked by knowing someone's from Scarborough. So that part um, I think is still the same. We're still kind of flowing with the same people, the same names. Um, so uh, I know we're expanding more, but I would love to see us expand even more and reach out and, and give like really a lot of Scarborough people a chance to, to take the mic. That's been kind of like, um, Ali, you like lobbed that, that, that to me because I was literally about to say for me, I'd love to see just more diverse diversity in terms of us working together, you know, um, Personally, I haven't worked with like there's a large Chinese community here in Scarborough and I haven't worked with many, many Chinese creatives personally, you know, and I know sometimes it's interesting because if you look at Scarborough, there's kind of silos in terms of how economic like social economics go and housing goes. But at the same time, I'd love to work with more communities, other communities that may not look like me that aren't black and brown, you know, uh, that's that's personally what I would what I would say. I would like to work towards. And as I'm saying that, I'm going to look to see who's out there, who I can connect with and work with, because at the end of the day, if you're from Scarborough, you're from Scarborough, you know, and it doesn't matter the the, the cultural narratives that we, we come with. We have lived similar lived experiences. And so that's something I want to challenge my own self to do more of in terms of collaborating with other cultures and other communities. Nice. We have an audience question from Michelle. What have you seen done elsewhere that you would like to see in Scarborough? I want to, I'm so sorry, but I have to jump on that. Atlanta is one of the best places I have ever been to. The Like Southern hospitality, oh, sorry, I just got excited. Southern <laughs> hospitality in Atlanta is like nothing I have ever experienced. They put on for each other since the 80s, Usher, like, anyways, I can keep going. I can name lists. I can give you names and names of names. We in Toronto, in Scarborough, if we did what Atlanta did, we would take over the world. And that's something I love Atlanta for that because they're not afraid to put each other on. They're not afraid to say, yo, come, come to the studio. Um, uh, Summer Walker is going to be here. Like, they work together. You know what I mean? And so it's it's sad like I even even and it doesn't matter like whether you're doing R&B or you're doing hip-hop or trap music that's just the culture especially in trap music they're all about putting each other on so I'd say Atlanta like we got to stop the gatekeeping <laughs> yeah I, I just agree with Randell so nothing more to add there Atlanta's dope Atlanta and Chicago are the two places for me too, because Chicago really rides for their, they have their own scene there too, but there's something, I agree with Randell, there's something to take about, like Atlanta, that's where I got that black, the first time I ever saw Black Mecca was in Atlanta, and just the wealth, it's, there's wealth there, there's wealth because they share it, right, there's wealthy Black people, there's, there's things that you've never seen before, um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can't, I can't add too much to it. I have a love for that place as well. So they're a bit slow moving. We're a little faster than them, but uh, they have the infrastructure. They understand what the like economy and how to use capitalism in the ways that it should be used to spread wealth between uh, or amongst Black people and, and marginalized communities. And because of that, they don't have like the marginalized communities don't feel like that's how they exist there. Um, so. I, I, I agree, and there's something to take from that. So we're down to our last two minutes. We don't have any more audience questions, so I'm going to end it on my last question, which is if you had one piece of advice or wisdom to share with all the Scarborough artists um, or art curators that are watching tonight, what would you tell them? 
off of one of my favorite quotes and what has gotten me here today. And the quote is either from Mother Teresa or Gandhi, I keep forgetting, but it says, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I'll repeat it. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And all four of us here have looked to serve and that's why we're where we are. So I, I tell, that's my advice, serve. If you focus on others, the universe will take care of you. All right. Um, I think the fall in love, I would say, with, with your craft, you know, and, and, you know, always be willing to, to experiment and to, and to try things. And it's unfortunate because, you know, even in, in the black community at times, we don't always like when people like experiment, yo, why is Kanye doing this 808 and heartbeats thing? Like, yo, stay in your lane, brethren. Like, why is Common doing this electric thing? Like, we don't like when people experiment and try some different things. But I think, you know, fall in love with your craft, but also look at what else you can do with it. You know, don't just be like, yo, this is the lane, build a highway and, and try to explore different things that, and because you never know where it's going to take you, but don't just be like, yeah, this is, this is me and this is it. Like there's, there's just so much more. So, you know, fall in love with it and then try to figure out how to expand it. Yeah. I was going to say something really similar, but it's really like, just don't dim your light. You know what I mean? Think large, think large, expand, get out, expand also means physically moving, moving out of your area or getting out of your area, travel, go to workshops, come downtown, like don't be afraid of the systems and the in institutions that are down here. There's a lot of red tape, but there's also a lot of access to things that you haven't seen before. And I think that the more you see and the more experience you have, the more inspiration you are guided by around your community, but outside your community, learn about different cultures, learn about what's happening in the world um, you, and then expand your and then don't dim it just think large like dream big and don't feel like you're 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 boxed in by any type of neighborhood experience how you were brought up your childhood your education none of that none of that it's it's, it's like your your mind is a nebula it's fast you know you keep feeding it you keep learning you keep inspiring and then you output it in that way as well That's a beautiful way to end it. Um, so I want to say thank you to our amazing panelists, Dwayne, Ashley, Randell. Thank you to Artworks Toronto for having the Scarborough Rise talk tonight. And thank you for to all of the audience members who tuned in and the ones who sent questions. I can't wait to see what more you three um, bring us, including that space with the building with the names with your names on it in Scarborough. So everyone have a great night.